this is the first video in AKS series I was planning to create the AKS series from so long unfortunately I was not getting enough time because I was also working with other stuff so it's uh, it's here AKS well Azure Kubernetes service this is the managed Kubernetes cluster in Azure and AKS reduces the complexity and operational overhead of managing Kubernetes by offloading much of that responsibility to Azure as a hosted Kubernetes service, Azure handles critical tasks like health monitoring and maintenance. Kubernetes master are managed by Azure that too free of cost. You only manages the agent nodes and you only pay for the agent nodes. So this is a little brief about the AKS and in, in order to understand AKS, uh, you should first know what Kubernetes is, right? So if you are continuing with this series, doesn't matter whether you, you do AKS or Kubernetes, you know, AKS is the managed Kubernetes. And in order to understand the Kubernetes, you should have a basic understanding of Docker, container, and container orchestration engine that would really help you to understand what Kubernetes is or what and how AKS works okay so let's get started in order to understand all these first we need to do a little dig how actually the deployment happens traditionally before the virtualized world and then the container deployment just for the understanding of course, I cannot cont cannot cover entire prerequisite in this video. A little bit we are talking about. Uh, so let's get started without wasting any more time. So the traditional approach was like this. Okay, there was a hardware. There was an operating system on the hardware, and on that operating system there was applications running right so this was your hardware this was your OS and these are your apps running on the operating system right but you know let's suppose if multiple applications run on a physical server this is a physical server there can be instances where one application would take most of the resources and, and as a result, the other application would underperform. Okay, so a solution for this would be to run each application on a different physical server, but this did not scale as resources were underutilized. And it was expensive for organizations to maintain many physical servers. Okay, so that's how or that's why to resolve this kind of situation, a uh, virtualized world came into the picture. In that scenario, we had, of course, we had the hardware operating system. operating system now on the operating system there was one more layer and that layer is hypervisor okay what hypervisor does it allows you to create your own virtual machines over here okay and these virtual machines have their own operating systems all right so it would be like this you're creating your own VM on the hypervisor. Okay, these are your VM 
and it would be like uh, okay apps are running on the VM and it has its own binary and libraries it has its own operating system and this is your VM I need to make it black so that we could easily see this is for all the VMs right that's how the virtualized world is working they still are pretty much in existence and most of the world is running on that all right now each VM is a full machine running all the components including its own operating system on top of the virtualized hardware all right this is your hardware OS hypervisor okay now this virtualization allows better utilization of resources uh, in a physical server and allows better scalability because an application can be added or updated easily it reduces hardware cost and much more with virtualization you can uh, present a set of physical resources as a cluster of disposal virtual machines so you can see uh, let me write this down here this was the traditional way and then this become your our virtualized world and then come the containerized applications okay in containerized applications things were like this hardware of course all right okay mm -hmm. operating system of course right now instead of hypervisor instead of hypervisor we had we have container runtime like docker or rocket container runtime which will help you to create container by the underlying resources or using the operating system right here like host operating system so it is a user isolation okay so on the uh, uh, just like this we have containers now this is our containers so this is not VM and there is no OS this is not a VM and there is no OS these are just the container utilizing host OS and absolutely light weighted okay so that's how the container world works now virtual machines are slow and take a lot of time to boot but containers are fast and boots quickly as it uses host operating system and shares the relevant libraries now containers do not waste or block host resources unlike virtual machines because it consumes only the resource which is needed but to run an o run an vm you need a minimum resources for your os right containers have isolated libraries and binaries specific specific to the application they are running okay and containers have no guest os processing and execution of applications are very fast since applications specific binaries and libraries of containers run on the host kernel booting up a container takes only a fraction of a second and also containers are lightweight and faster than virtual machines so these are the few reasons why why container come to the picture now we come till here now it's time to understand kubernetes okay so containers are are good 
okay containers are awesome they are lightweighted they have a lot of benefits now containers are a good way to bundle and run your applications in a production environment you need to manage the containers that run the applications and ensure that there is no downtime okay for example if a container goes down another container needs to start wouldn't it be easier if the behavior was handled by a system okay that's how kubernetes come into the picture so kubernetes is nothing it's just an abstraction of your uh, layer on your vm which provides you with a framework to run distributed systems resiliently it takes care of scaling and failover for your application provides deployment patterns and more for example kubernetes can easily manage a canary deployment of your system okay so kubernetes is let's write down a few important points about kubernetes So what is Kubernetes? It is container orchestration engine, right? And it, we also call it Kate, okay? because there is like eight letters between K and S, like Kubernetes, K -H. It is developed by Google and it is donated or handed over to CNCF later, which is Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And in order to manage, maintain your containers, which are absolutely lightweight, can go down anytime and it's not like uh, one or two containers are running there are like hundreds thousands of containers are running in order to support your applications to manage that number of containers you need some kind of orchestrations so that's what the kubernetes is so if we need to talk about in, in little detail what all things that we can do with the kubernetes that will help us understand it a little more okay so let's see Kubernetes can expose a container using DNS name or using their own IP addresses. If traffic to a container is high, Kubernetes is able to load, balance, and distribute the network traffic so that the development deployment is stable. Okay, so it is uh, it is managing containers in such a way. So load balancing, automatic load balancing. Okay, now. Kubernetes allows you to automatically mount the storage system of your choice, such as a local storage, public cloud providers, and more. So, storage orchestration. For example, if you are running an uh, running a container with all the application and things are stored in the container, your container goes down, new container comes up. But if it's not a shared storage, like from the uh, cloud providers or the local storage then you have lost your data as well so storage is from the outside not inside the container but it is mounted inside the container okay so Kubernetes can do that for you now automated rollouts and rollbacks it can help you do that Okay. You can describe the desired state of your deployed container using Kubernetes, and it can change the actual state to the desired state at a control rate. For example, you can automate Kubernetes to create new containers for your deployment, remove existing containers, and adopt all their resources to the new containers. Okay. Kubernetes restarts containers that fail 
replaces containers, kills containers that don't respond to your user-defined health check and doesn't advertise them to clients until they are ready to serve. So it has a self-healing property, okay? Now, whenever you run an application, you're gonna have some secret in it, right? For example, you, you're gonna store your secret for HTTPS, right? So Kubernetes lets you store and manage sensitive information such as passwords, OAuth tokens, and SSH keys. You can deploy and update secrets and application configuration without rebuilding your container images and without exposing secrets in your stack configuration. Okay, so secret and config management. All right, so these are a few benefits. All right, so this is this is what the Kubernetes is. And now, Kubernetes is more like a master and slave architecture. You have a master node and you have a worker node. It would be like this. There is a master and there are a worker nodes. This is your master and these are your worker nodes. Let's suppose worker one, worker two, worker three. Okay, it manages all these. Okay. Now, you have to give the commands or, uh, or information or whatever you want Kubernetes to do for you. For example, running an application, running a container or pods. So you command your master with the with either command line tool or maybe with the help of GUI or the API okay so that's how it works we will check the uh, architecture in the next video of course now this is the uh, a very basic uh, thing that I'm talking about this part This part, master part, is taken care by Azure for you. Okay, if you talk about AKS, you are not even paying for the master node. It is all managed by Azure. You are responsible for the worker nodes. Okay. Now, if you talk about the installation, installation of Kubernetes, you can install as a mini cube or on a virtual machine or physical machine as a hard way like installing each and every component and the third way is using a managed kubernetes right so AKS is managed Kubernetes and that's what we will uh, cover in this series and this is the very first video trying to understand what we are going to complete in this video what Kubernetes is why it come to the picture what all benefits it provides and how it works so well that's all about it in next video we will try to understand the entire architecture of Kubernetes and step by step, we will try to cover entire AKS in this series. Well, thank you for watching and you have a good day.